How's everyone doing? This is a what didn't make the shelf video. This is a video series where I show you what movies didn't make the shelf, aka the collection, and this is an all horror edition. I've got 17 titles, Blu-rays and DVDs. Let me know if you've seen any of them and what you think of them, and let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below. And there are some movies in here I do enjoy. Uh, there's some ones that are upgrades or ones that even though I like it, I just don't see myself re-watching it again. If I can't see myself re-watching a movie, it's got to go. I don't want to have things just to have them. Space is at a premium. And realistically, how many movies can you re-watch in your lifetime? Uh, I've got around 6,000 movies. I want to cut that to like 2,000. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and get into it. First up is The Uninvited. Now, this was really atmospheric. It's an old school ghost movie from uh, 1944. And I really like the cast here. Ray Milan, who was in uh, Dial M for Murder, The Lost Weekend. I also have uh, Ruth Hussey. And then uh, the one young girl in here who's the love interest uh, is played by Gail Russell. And I remember reading about her because I just thought she was so stunningly gorgeous. And uh, I thought she did a great job in the role. A very tragic story with her. She ended up passing away at a young age, 36, from alcoholism. Uh, she passed away uh, surrounded by alcohol bottles and just alone in the apartment. Apparently, she had a rough time with her career uh, after this and uh, just terrible. There's a lot of uh, really awful old Hollywood stories, but a really nice release from the Criterion Collection. Uh, you get great special features, transfer, and a lot of times they'll have interior artwork. And then the booklet right here, which I love when movies include a booklet, especially for uh, movies that I enjoy, finding out behind the scenes information and write-ups from uh, critics and stuff like that, historians. Yeah, uh, Gail Russell, and there's the, the rest of the cast right there. Uh, everybody played their parts really well. Here's the, the attic space right there, which is uh, a scene that was pivotal for some of the haunting aspects. Uh, he has his piano up there and kind of like his office that it's turned into. So it's just basically about a brother and sister who decide to buy this house on a whim and uh, move there uh, to the coast and uh, in the small you know village area. And uh, they find out the house is haunted, but it doesn't scare them away. And I feel like the scariest part of this movie is when uh, the brother and sister who end up uh, getting the house, uh, they're walking up this cliff to the house. Holy moly, I can't believe they did that. They would never allow that in this day and age. Uh, you know, the producer's agents, no, that's a liability right there. Insurance purposes, they can't walk off this cliff. Uh, get some stunt people for it. But yeah, that looked crazy. How'd they even get there? They were like coming in from like uh, the water, the ocean. Uh, so that was uh, wild to see uh, how different things were in the, the 40s. And, uh, you know, some of the things that the actors had to do, you know, stunt wise. And, you know, it just wouldn't happen today. Uh, so yeah, overall, like this just isn't for a ghost movie, you know, it's got the atmosphere, but it doesn't have the scares. And I think that's important to have both for uh, a ghost movie, a haunting movie. This is beautifully shot. Uh, I really like, uh, the setting too on this, like, you know, cliff area, uh, over in, uh, like the UK. And it's like this house that it has this long history with, uh, this family and, uh, the, the one girl, uh, she's the love interest here. She's finds out more about her history. You know, she thinks her mother is trying to contact her and she hasn't gone in the house in, you know, a long time since she was a kid. Um, I will say the first half of the movie, I really liked better, even though the, the movie isn't scary first off, but, uh, I feel like it was just all leading up with the drama. And then the second half, it's going into the details. And I just felt like that half kind of dragged a bit. And I feel like there was a twist that, for me, it was formulaic. There was only really a couple possible outcomes because you know it's not going to be that easy. It's going to be something different. Uh, so there's one of two ways, and given the time period, it could really only be the other way, and I figured that out. And so that kind of, you know, was a bit of a detriment there. Most movies are formulaic. You can kind of figure things out if you think. Uh, and <laughs> uh, so that, you know, I didn't really care for the way that it ended either. I wanted more from that. Um, I just didn't really think it was anything standout or special. I know a lot of people love this one. Uh, I was a bit disappointed. Again, I like the cast. I like the the setting, the cinematography. It was atmospheric, but it just it wasn't scary. It wasn't anything standout in my opinion. Uh, really nice release though for it. The Uninvited from 1944, uh, directed by Lewis Allen. Uh, again, the cast was awesome. 
And uh, next up is Scream 6. Ah, oh, man, this one was probably my least favorite in the franchise. Holy moly. I was looking forward to this one, uh, you know, with some of the people involved, Samara Weaving, even though just, you know, briefly in here. But I remember they were, you know, touting it as, you know, nobody's safe. They say that, like, so often for these movies. And you get people in here shot, stabbed, like, a dozen times, and they still live. Come on. Um, so, yeah, that one was uh, a bit of a disappointment for me. I just thought it was so cliche ridden and just the fact that like all these people got stabbed so many times and still lived. Uh, you can only suspend disbelief so much and I just, uh, this one was just not for me. Uh, I wish they would have gone a different route too. And then with the killer's reveal, I, I didn't really care for that too. It's just like they're running out of ideas. They're beating a dead horse with this franchise. They need to stop. I just, uh, I, I don't know. Let me know what your favorite sequel in the Scream franchise is. I do really like uh, Jenna Ortega a lot. She's amazing. Wednesday really blew me away. I wasn't expecting to like that one, uh, and I love it. Uh, and this is directed by um, Tyler Gillett and then Matt uh, Bettinelli uh, Open. The writing is so minute down here. But they directed uh, Scream 5, which I definitely liked a lot better than this one. And then uh, Ready or Not, which was so freaking incredible uh, again with Samara weaving there she's amazing uh but yeah I feel like they need to take a break from these scream movies just try to come up with something a bit more unique I just feel like this whole franchise is just it's been done to death they're trying to do these new twists and it's just I don't know I can't this franchise for me is just so beaten into the ground I'm done just stop in my opinion <laughs> i know it has a huge fan following i get that uh, i think my favorite movie in the whole franchise is scream 2 but oh man just uh, such a huge missed opportunity i like the the last one a lot more but i still feel like that one could have been improved upon too it's just so many things we've seen before for this franchise next up is darlin and this is actually directed by uh, pollyanna mcintosh her uh, directorial debut here uh, you might know her from uh, the walking dead or the woman which is uh, the best of this trilogy. You have uh, Offspring, a Woman, and then Darlin. Uh, for I'm not sure if it has a name for this trilogy, the Woman trilogy. But the Woman is definitely the best by far. And Pollyanna McIntosh was so good in that one. Directed by uh, Lucky McKee and then uh, Jack Ketchum, uh, wrote, uh, based off of his book. Uh, so great team up there. And uh, this one's just kind of following that same storyline, except now she has a daughter, which she gives up in this local, like, uh, you know, church takes her in and tries to reform her and then she you know wants to come back and get her and just you know she's violent she's violent some greatness some bloodshed but overall uh i don't know it just misses the mark and falls a bit flat um so i didn't really enjoy that one and uh, i do want to see more from pollyanna mcintosh as an actress and director i thought this was you know a decent uh first time um so i mean i definitely i <laughs> I like it a lot better than some other movies I've seen recently. Uh, next up is The Lair. This was a huge disappointment. I was looking for it. Like that cover. Look at that awesome cover. This is what drew me to horror movies to begin with. I was a young kid growing up in the VHS rental store era, mom and pop stores. I would be enthralled by the horror VHS artwork and just, it sucked me in. And I still, you know, I'm guilty of that. Uh, this would be, you know, an impulse buy. See that cover, anything cool like that? let me check it out. And uh, this one was super disappointing for me. Um, you know, the creature effects were cool, but everything else just falls flat. They're in Afghanistan and they're uh, looking at this underground bunker and there's these uh, man-made biological weapons here, half human, half alien that are, uh, you know, awakened. And uh, this is actually, it, it's surprising. It's directed by Neil Marshall, who of course did uh, The Descent and, uh, you know, I, I really like him as a director. And uh, also Dog Soldiers, too. Dog Soldiers is freaking amazing. So, yeah, I, I'm enjoying him as a director, but this one was a huge step backwards. So, um, yeah, the acting was atrocious. Uh, you know, outside of, like, the creature effects, nothing really stands out about this one. So, bummed I didn't like it because uh, I wanted to, and it just it wasn't there. Uh, but they can all be winners, I guess. And then next up is Spine of the Night. I love this one. And the only reason I'm getting rid of Spine of the Night, uh, this Blu-ray, uh, which is actually a UK region-free Blu-ray, uh, is because uh, I want to get the 4K steelbook here in the US. Uh, so this is an upgrade. Uh, love the movie. 
and there's a few in here where they're upgrades. So uh, a lot of times when I do these videos, I, you know, what didn't make the shelf, it's only a placeholder because I'm gonna get a different edition, an upgrade edition. So that's definitely the case here. Uh, although I think it's very cathartic to go through the shelves and say, hey, you know, this one's been sitting for a while. Uh, I haven't watched it. Uh, probably not interested in watching. I saw a couple clips. Doesn't do it for me actually. And uh, or I'm trying to rationalize keeping it for this reason, that reason. But I didn't really love the movie overall. If I feel that way, or if I'm you know debating about it, it's gotta go. Uh, I just want to have movies in my collection that I love. And I want to watch. If I can't see myself rewatching a movie within the next year or two, why am I keeping it? It's got to go. Space is definitely at a premium at this point. This was like rotoscope animation, fantasy adventure, very much in the vein of like uh, fire and ice, heavy metal, that kind of stuff. Uh, really good voice casting in here. Lucy Lawless, Patton Oswalt, uh, a few other Joe uh, Maganello, a few other recognizable people. This was awesome. Like medieval times, this, you know, flower that gives you all the special powers. It's gory, bloody, freaking amazing. I loved it. I know this one got a lot of negative reviews, but I thought it was awesome. And I know they had like a, just a small crew, especially for the animation. So it took, I want to say like seven years to make this film. Uh, so a labor of love and just incredible. This is actually a uh, UK region free import. Same with The Lair. Only reason I'm getting rid of this one is because I want the upgrade because I love it and I want the best possible release for it. Uh, same thing for, uh, for this one, kind of. Uh, I upgraded for the slipcover. Uh, don't hate me. I know not everybody cares about the slipcovers. I do. Uh, if I know a movie has a slipcover and I get it without it, it just feels incomplete. So I got this one initially just to check it out for cheap. And uh, this is directed by Jonathan Glazer, who directed Sexy Beast. Uh, I want to say like early 2000s, maybe 2000, 2002 re uh, range with Ben Kingsley. Um, and I know he's done like a lot of like music videos and stuff like that. And this one blew me away. Like, really incredible a24 is usually really hit or miss for me this is a24 uh i would say art house horror if you will alien horror too scarlett johansson was awesome in here super atmospheric very surreal feel to it uh so only reason i'm getting rid of this one is because uh i got on the way uh the blu-ray with the slip cover so uh yeah i this one is very divisive though you love it or hate it but for me, I was blown away. And Under the Skin takes place in Scotland. I love uh, a lot of the, you know, washed out hues and the shooting locations. And I think they use uh, non-actors in uh, a lot of the scenes too, which I thought was uh, really interesting. And then there's the one character who has like a elephantitis of the face. And uh, I was curious to see if that was real or not. And it's real. So I thought that was something a bit unique and interesting. Uh, but I definitely uh, like that kind of like dreary feel to it as well. You know, kind of uh, the shooting locations add to that and kind of uh, heighten some of the, the surrealism too. Uh, you know, foggy, rainy, dreary, misty. A24, very hit or miss for me. Usually miss. They have a huge following. Uh, but even though I don't always like what they release, I appreciate their creative and unique ideas, which they have a ton of in their releases. So very pleased with this one uh next up is sorority babes in the slime bowl arama 2 why would they ever need to make a sequel the first one was terrible in my opinion this one is so bad unwatchably bad kelly maroney's in here uh night of the comet i love that one uh you got brinky stevens uh, michelle bauer uh kelly maroney had a little bit of a bigger role the other two were just briefly in here uh but it's just like the same kind of thing with an updated uh take on it with uh going back to uh, the bowling alley and they awaken the imp right there and the imp plays tricks on them and uh, the acting is abysmal oh geez louise you know college kids and they they go there and just the the romance aspects back and forth it was just there's you know some tna that's pretty much the the best part of this is the tna um but yeah it was just a battle of attrition to sit through this one rough i wasn't a fan of the first one I know that one has a big following too, which is, I don't know how. I do like a lot of full moon stuff, but you you have to temper your expectations. If you've got to be into really low budget, cheesy horror, this one to me was just not it though. Yeesh. And next up is Wormwood Apocalypse. This is an Australian zombie movie follow up to uh, Road of the Dead. Uh, the first one I definitely enjoyed a lot more than this one. And I did like the cast a lot in here. I think from uh, all aspects, the cast, uh, you know, did the most that they could with uh, what they had to, to, to work with. And I do like this one. I just didn't love it. So uh, yeah, it's, it's the same kind of take on it, the time period. 
and uh, you know the zombie wasteland. Uh, there's one character in here who is a half zombie, half human, and uh, they believe like she's the key for ending the apocalypse. Uh, and then there's like a scientists and uh, like military people trying to uh, figure things out. And uh, there's these experiments. And the one character in here is also kind of like on his own, but trying to help out too. Um, and of course, they both get involved. You know, bloodshed occurs and. I, I mean, I like some of the characters. I like some of the, you know, the kills and, uh, you know, I, I thought it was interesting, but it just, to me, I feel like I could watch so many others. I like the first one a little bit better. So I don't know. I, I liked it, but I didn't love it. Uh, let me know your favorite zombie movie and your, give me some underrated zombie movies too, that you think are, uh, deserving of more attention. I always mention Fido and Juan of the Dead. Juan of the Dead very much in the vein of Shaun of the Dead, Slacker. Uh, zombie movie right there from Cuba. And next up is Vampire Circus. I got another box set, which is right here. Yes, Hammer Horror. So this is a uh, release from Imprint. They do such an amazing job in an Australian company. Uh, region free for everything I've seen from them. But it has uh, Twins of Evil, Vampire Circus, Hands of the Ripper, which I hated Hands of the Ripper. Uh, Countess Dragula in here. Uh, but so yeah, I have the standalone release right here for uh, from the Synapse release, but I got the box set right here. So keeping the box set, getting rid of, of this one, I don't need two of it. Um, so there you go, just another uh, upgrade. And this one is just as the title suggests, a uh, circus with vampires, uh, you know, attacking this uh, you know small town. And uh, there's also this curse of uh, this count that the, uh, you know, village killed. And, uh, you know, they think the, curse is coming true uh and it is a nice release from synapse right here i really like synapse as a company uh, i think they're actually kind of underrated uh people think of you know screen factory arrow video those are some of the top ones too and i think uh, imprint now is doing a really great job umbrella too uh australian companies uh and then, you know second site in the uk uh but most of those ones are region b locked so i don't really you know i'm, I'm region a uh, but i'm thankful that you know umbrella and imprint are region free so I try to get a lot of their releases, especially ones that we don't have here in the U.S. But companies like Severin, Synapse, uh, you know, Vinegar Syndrome is doing big things now, too. But I feel like Synapse and Severin deserve way more love and appreciation. So a uh, nice release right here. And again, the only reason I'm getting rid of it is because I got that box set, which is awesome. But a uh, really great release right here. And love the interior artwork shot right there. Uh, makes me think of a like, layer of the white worm a little bit, that shot. And definitely let me know what your favorite Hammer horror movie is. There's some great ones out there. Uh, especially I like things with, you know, Peter Cushing and uh, Christopher Lee. This one, uh, you know, good vampire movie. Let me know what your favorite vampire movie is. Uh, for me, it's uh, 30 Days of Night. I talk about that one, like, ad nauseum on here. I love horror movies in a snowy setting. The blood pops on the, on the snow. And then, uh, you know, utilizing the extended periods of darkness. Other countries have that too, but uh, I just thought that was awesome. The vampires were gritty, dirty, nasty, raw. Their language, uh, just so friggin' awesome. Ben Foster is the stranger character. Uh, just bloody, brutal, dirty. So friggin' good. And then I think From Dusk Till Dawn would probably be my next favorite. I even love the sequels. Most people hate those sequels. Uh, but I feel like a lot of people would say like Fright Night, Lost Boys, Nosferatu, Dragula, uh, those kind of ones. So... You know, give me some underrated vampire movies, too. I know I've mentioned uh, Thirst in the Past, a Korean one uh, from the director of Old Boy. Uh, so I feel like that one still flies a bit under the radar, even though it's got some notoriety. Uh, Affliction, which is a really good found footage vampire movie. Nobody ever talks about that one. I'm trying to get some more exposure for it, but let me know some uh, underrated vampire movies, too. Next up, we've got Exorcism of God. Honestly, I've had this one sitting for a while, and there's another one down here too, which I've had sitting for a while. If it's sitting for over a year, I gotta let it go. I remember when Blockbuster closed, uh, they had the dollar Blu-rays, I bought like a huge stack of them, and they are just sitting for like years, collecting dust. I was like, you know what? If I can't see myself watching this movie or interested in watching it in a year, it's gotta go. And I feel like I've seen so many Exorcism movies that were just terrible, so many, so... I haven't heard anything about this one really. You know, it just looks very generic to me. So I'm gonna let this one go. Um, I just, you know, I gotta invest my time in movies that I'm excited to watch and not just run of the mill recycled 
genre films that, you know, I'm more forgiving of horror tropes because it's my favorite genre. I'd have to say like Exorcism Possession movies, they're not my favorite uh, in the genre. I feel like I've just, there's, it's been overrun, especially in recent years. Uh, but a couple ones that I think are underrated are The Exorcism of Emily Rose and then the last Exorcism, I found footage one. Uh, the sequel was terrible, but the first one was great to me. So I'm gonna let that one go. Next up is The Island of Fishmen. Was not a fan of this one, very much in the uh, vein of like Island of Dr. Moreau. You look at the back, I thought those creatures look creepy and interesting, uh, but oh, it just falls flat. Terrible acting. Um, you know, they get uh, this group of people get uh, stranded on a, like an island right here and they're attacked by these uh, amphibious monsters here. And there's a uh, professor that are, uh, you know, doing these biological experiments and, you know, creating this genetic army of fishmen. He also uh, believes there's this gold uh, that belongs to the lost city of Atlantis, trying to figure that out. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's so, this one was rough to sit through. Ugh. Next up is Hereditary. Ari Aster's best film by far, in my opinion. I was not a fan of Midsommar. I remember they, uh, Fangoria had on the cover that uh, one character with like the deformed face and that character was in the movie for like less than a minute screen time. How are you gonna put that character on the cover of the magazine? They're barely in the movie, you know? Uh, I just, it's folk drama more than horror for uh, Midsommar. This one to me is not only one of the creepiest movies of recent years, but of all time. I know a lot of people didn't care for the ending. They say it was just for shock value. I disagree uh, vehemently. Like you, you can look and read into it if you, watch the movie and pay attention and rewatch it you could like really delve in and the ending just works so well for it and i love how you're following this one character and then just suddenly something happens very much kind of like psycho you're following this one character and then you're following somebody else uh but i love this one and tony collette deserved an oscar for her performance at least a nomination and uh, the academy is just doesn't show love for horror. James McAvoy for Split deserved an Oscar too, or at least a nomination. He was also really great in Filth, a uh, nice Irvin Welsh adaptation. I never hear anybody talk about that one, but the performance there was awesome. He's an incredible actor. People know him from X-Men, but uh, of course for, you know, Split too and Glass. Glass I wasn't as big of a fan of. Unbreakable was my favorite of that uh, trilogy right there, but then Split, just the performance was incredible. How can you deny that? But uh, only reason I'm getting rid of this one is I um, got the 4K coming and I uh, got the slip too. Paid a little bit more for that because the slip's out of print. Again, I know not everybody cares about that, but I do. Uh, so love this film. Only getting rid of it for uh, the upgrade. Uh, next up is Jacob's Ladder, which I remember loving this one as a kid. Very surreal feel. Creepy too, especially like, uh, you know, the hospital kind of scenes. And this is an early role for Macaulay Culkin in here too. You see right there in the back. But uh, I love the cast here. Tim Robbins, Elizabeth Pena, uh, Danny Aiello. Uh, Bing Rames is in here too. Oh gosh, where's that? Uh, Pruitt Taylor Vince. I always mess up his name. Uh, but a uh, really good cast here. And just dealing with, uh, you know, war and passing of his young son and just dealing with the demons of that and just all these haunting visions, uh, you know, PTSD and uh, just kind of uh, going through all of that and just the visuals here are crazy. This is directed by Adrian Lin, uh, who's directed some, you know, movies dealing with trysts and debauchery, uh, Unfaithful, uh, Deep Water with uh, Ben Affleck. Anna Diarmas is in there too. Uh, I haven't seen that one yet, but uh, Unfaithful was awesome. Uh, he also directed uh, Nine and a Half Weeks uh fatal traction indecent proposal so again a bunch of those ones uh dealing with that you know theme of debauchery if you will but he also directed uh foxes which uh had a young jody foster scott bale really good cast in that one flash dance too uh so definitely a fan of uh adrian lynn and this was a really good one only reason i'm getting rid of this one is because i got the recent imprint release which i think is a, a nicer addition and uh overall uh better release so uh, there you go. Another one is an upgrade right here is House of Wax. And I love this one. People crap on this one, say it's, you know, cheesy. It's not cheesy. It's actually great. Like if you pay attention to this, like the house itself, so incredible uh, with all the wax and stuff, all the intricate detailing. Um, and then, you know, Paris Hilton here, her death is awesome. Uh, great gore effects in here. Uh, it's a product of its time too. 
Uh, you see this cast is from 2005. Uh, Alicia Cuthbert, Chad Michael Murray, uh, Paris Hilton, Jared uh, Padalecki, a few other recognizable people in here. Uh, but I only reason I'm getting rid of this one is because I got the, the Scream Factory Blu-ray, Collector's Edition one. And that is way better, the transfer. Uh, I think it had some new special features and stuff too. Uh, but yeah, I love this one and it's awesome. This is a great slasher. It's not cheesy fun. It's just a good one. Uh, and this is directed by uh, John Collette Sarah, who directed The Orphan, uh, The Shallows. The Shallows was the movie that got me into 4K. I watched the Blu-ray of it. I thought it looked great. And then I watched the 4K, the clarity, the details. Just awesome. Blake Lively in 4K. Incredible. Uh, but he's worked with The Rock a couple times, Jungle Cruise and Black Adam. They're going to make a second Jungle Cruise movie. I know The Rock wanted to make another Black Adam movie, but with... Uh, you know, James Gunn taking over DC. Apparently they want, you know, uh, new fresh faces and they're going to change things up. So, you know, and then John Kletzer directed four films with Liam Neeson, uh, The Commuter, Run All Night, which apparently is getting a sequel to Nonstop and then uh, Unknown. Uh, so, you know, I think a lot of directors, you know, they work with an actor and they feel like they bring the best out of the role. So they want to work with them more often. So, uh, you know, they had uh, a good team ups there, both Rock and Liam Neeson with John Collette Sarah. But I really like what he does in the horror genre, especially. And I hope to see more of him directing horror. Uh, but love this one so friggin' much. Let me know what your favorite slasher movie of all time is. And let me know of a slasher movie you think is underrated. For me, my favorite slasher movie is Tourist Trap, which is a supernatural slasher movie. You've got mannequins, which always creep me out. Uh, Chuck Connors plays uh, Mr. Slauson. You also have Tiny Roberts in there. I really like the cast, but it's super creepy. And it's also one that I think is underrated. Uh, so that works for both there, but a really good 70s horror movie, Tourist Trap, high recommendation there. And next up, we've got the double feature for The Watcher and The Skeleton Key. I definitely enjoy the heck out of The Skeleton Key. Southern Gothic kind of vibes going on. And I, just, I like the story and how it plays out with the twist and everything like that. Uh, Kate Hudson is awesome. Uh, the whole cast here is really good. Uh, you've also got um, Gina Rollins in here, Peter uh, Sarsgaard, uh, and John Hurt. And uh, just this one's awesome. The sequel's trash, absolute trash. Uh, but only reason I'm getting rid of this one is because uh, I have a uh, standalone release for The Skeleton Key. And The Watcher, I thought, was terrible. Uh, with uh, James Spader, Marissa Tomei, and Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves is like a serial killer. He's obsessed with James uh, Spader, who was a, a former FBI agent. And then Marissa Tomei is James Spader's like therapist. I'm not a big Keanu Reeves fan acting-wise. I don't think he's a good actor. Um, I know he is just real hot on the John Wick movies. I'm just not that into those movies. I feel like those movies could have been better with a uh, different lead actor. And then he's shot at three million times, and he still survives. Ah, I don't know. The acting, you know, aside, for horror movies, again, I'm more forgiving of the tropes and stuff like that. And a lot of it, you have to think, oh, they're supernatural. But for action movies, they're supposed to be more grounded in reality. You know, unless he is the Terminator or Michael Myers and he's getting shot that many times, come on. Uh, and I just feel like the, it's the formula we've seen over and over again. And just, that's another one. Stop making them. Scream, stop making them. John Wick, stop making them. Uh, for me, my favorite action movies of the recent years... Uh, the Raid movies, by far. I liked Nobody. Uh, I liked the, uh, there's a movie called Faster with the Rock, not having to do with the Fast and the Furious franchise. It's a great revenge action movie. Has like a grindhouse feel to it. Um, Sisu was good too. Um, but again, you have to suspend disbelief on that one as well, a lot. But I prefer that over the John Wick movies too. Uh, but yeah, uh, Wrath of Man. That's another one I think is kind of like underrated. That one was incredible. Uh, so I feel like the best Jason Statham movies are Guy Ritchie movies. I always say that for like Mark Wahlberg. The best Mark Wahlberg movies are Peter Berg movies. All the based on true story or true event movies. Uh, but yeah, so I didn't care for The Watcher. And I've got Skeleton Key already on a standalone release. So get rid of this double feature. Brand new, still sealed. Uh, and then next up is Tailgate. This is another one that I've had sitting for a while. Kind of makes me think of like Unhinged with Russell Crowe. He was great in that one. It's basically, you know, where they're on the highway of this family and there is a van going really slowly and then they kind of lose their temper, road rage, and you know, beep the horn, and yell. And then uh, I guess he, the other person stalks them and terrorizes them. I've had this sitting for a while and you know, it, it looks pretty generic. It looks like it's gonna be 
really you know low budget bad acting uh so from what i've seen and uh clip wise and it's i'm i'm not into it I'm not interested in it. i've had it sitting for a while and then this one i was i was into i was like oh this cover makes me look, think of like it does kind of look like the donnie darko uh you know the bunny but on the back like you look at it look at that blood splatter look at that awesomeness so last of the grads was horrendously bad like unwatchable the acting was atrocious it falls flat on every level there's this coast to coast killer and you have these high school seniors they're in this like a uh, school lock-in which one of my schools had that i went to four different high schools <laughs> there was only one school that had the lock-in uh but yeah that's a, th a thing that certain schools do for the seniors the one of the last nights together they you know sleep over uh but this one there's a killer there and they have to fight to survive it was terrible so definitely not gonna watch that one don't want it in the collection I hear that all the time. People have these movies in their collection that they hate. I was like, oh, I hate this movie. I've seen people post that, oh, I bought this movie. Uh, it's brand new, still sealed. I'm never going to watch it. And I'm going to keep it. I, You know, for me, I've, I'm guilty of sometimes buying movies I'm interested initially. And then I check out more about it. And I'm like, ah, you know what? Actually, I don't want this. It happens. But like, I, I'm getting rid of them. Some people, I, I don't. Everybody collects differently. But it kind of blows my mind sometimes. I've seen people, they say, you know, they've got 6,000 movies. They're all brand new, still sealed. You got to open them up if you're interested in watching them. And also to make sure that, you know, the disc isn't damaged. You're not missing things. I've gotten the wrong disc inside. I've gotten like a movie where inside it's like a TV show. Or like, you know, uh, just completely wrong thing uh, where you're, you're missing stuff too. You're missing like a digital copy. You're missing a disc. That happens. So... I feel like you always want to open up and check. So I try to do that for everything I buy new. Uh, again, some of these ones have been sitting for a while. That's a new standard I'm implementing now. But there you go. Those are the 17 titles that didn't make the collection right there. If you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them. And let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. And definitely look forward to more of these what didn't make the shelf videos coming up soon because i'm always trying to thin down the collection but they keep releasing new movies and uh catalog titles too so it's an ebb and flow it's a battle and thank you for all the support in here i really do appreciate it take care and keep it spooky